As usual, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm here to provide you with daily cryptocurrency news and analysis, and today we'll be discussing XRP and Ripple in addition to the great majority of cryptocurrency and finance. And with that, wherever you guys may be, I hope everyone is enjoying a lovely day or night. There are a number of things that are both really intriguing and dubious that keep coming up on the timeline that we should carefully consider and discuss. One of those significant things is what we recently witnessed from Brad Garland's house. He was genuinely replying to a post made by Crypto Eddie, which we will discuss and play the video of. To start with, let me give a huge shout out to XRP Cryptocurrency Wolf. As you may recall, CEO Brad Garland House of Ripple claimed he was in shock after hearing some hypocritical remarks made by former SEC Chair Jay Clean currently. It goes without saying that Jay Clayton approved the Ripple case just before he resigned as SEC Chairman. We've been talking about Jay Clayton for a very long time, which is kind of crazy about everything. Yet, yeah, it's true that one of the main issues raised is Gary Gensler's targeting. Gary Gensler claims to be that, but he also notes that many people are unaware of how awful Jay Clayton and, you know, Hintman were. It moves along the line. As is the case with the majority of government institutions, this one has been corrupt from the start. Beyond that, though, I believe I can speak for everyone when I say that we have been in shock. We've been in disbelief for more than two years. Ever since that lawsuit, which was a big one, was dismissed. And it was one that caused a great deal of harm to retail workers. I mean, the retail industry ate up the first $15 billion when the case was announced. Yes, it is correct. The retail industry alone would have to pay $15 billion for the SEC who is purportedly safeguarding consumers to even announce the complaint. Because of you, I feel safe. But enough about this. Let's get into the main point of the statement. Thus, we descend. As we can see, he expressed his disbelief, which he actually did. Yes, it is here with us. I find it unbelievable. Brad Garland's house is this. And it's all because of what Clinton said during a discussion at a gathering hosted by the Council on Foreign Relations, a neutral, independent think tank, DEE -E tenant, D during which he expressed his open-minded views on regulation and cryptocurrency entrepreneurs. I have a great deal of empathy. Funny, yes, extremely understanding of the entrepreneur's desire to solicit funding from the general population, he continues by saying that regulators ought to be considering measures that would facilitate smaller and medium-sized businesses' ability to raise finance. Why had he not done this? When did he chair the SEC? He thinks that acknowledging that cryptocurrencies are a technology and not a product is the right approach to govern them. According to him, a new technology is providing the well-known product in a more effective manner. The debate over whether a product should be classified as a security or a commodity is, in my opinion, exaggerated because most of the choices are straightforward. Naturally, ripples also occur when an outline is obtained. Clean gained notoriety for suing Ripple over purportedly illegal XRP sales in the latter months of his administration and in late 2020. It goes without saying that Ripple won the lawsuit. And for at least the next two years or more, XRP was effectively classified as a currency. So important. However, this is the real video that Crypto Eddie, Jay Clayton, the former chair of the SEC, streamed live on November 21. The majority of those decisions are really simple, regardless of whether it's a security or commodity. Overblown muscle. I'm shocked. Have a look. I have a great deal of empathy for the business owners who sought to raise money by reaching out to the general population. And I have a, a lot of empathy for regular investors who are looking for those kinds of chances. A lot of what you observe during the ICO frenzy and from cryptocurrency enthusiasts is intense dissatisfaction with the current situation. Yes, they have good reason to be frustrated. It is imperative that we consider facilitating capital raising for smaller and medium-sized enterprises, as well as for accredited, non-accredited, to take advantage of those chances. investors. We'd also love to know what you believe are the best ways to control digital assets that are cryptocurrencies, given you've already mentioned some of the trade. Offs. If you don't mind, you might also mention how you believe that differs from the current administration and the reasons behind your belief that they have a different viewpoint. Yes, 
Thus, I believe that the proper method of regulation, realizing that cryptocurrency is a technology rather than a product, for nearly all circumstances, a distinct technology is used, presenting a known product in a sometimes more effective manner. To be honest, I have no idea what it would be worth, how much or how little. However, I believe the market can make the final decision at this point. There's enough, or more accurately, efficacy in trading and similar things where we can reach that point. However, I have kind of been thinking of cryptocurrency as a technology when it comes to regulation. I believe that the debate over whether a product should be classified as a commodity or a security is exaggerated. Most of those decisions, in my opinion, are really simple. To the degree that we will persist in debating such categorization choices, I advise moving forward. Let's establish controlled sites where you can post a waitlist till those categorization choices are made. As I've always said, so that you people don't do it again, everyone who is employed by the SEC both before and after they leave their positions. Ninety-nines of what Jay Clayton is truly stating here is being talked about by all of them. He had the opportunity to serve in the SEC. Still, nothing occurs. Another excellent example is Hester Pierce. We merely highlight how cheap her talk is. Is this where the real action is at? I believe that every American taxpayer should be furious at this very moment, since here's where our money is spent. It's those who are fully aware of what is morally correct. Oh, see. They are aware that they could succeed. All they want to do is avoid it. They wish to go for these businesses in order to obtain easy paydays. And again, in the end, it's all just rubbish. Naturally, Johnny Dean used this quotation, saying that Clayton, Bill Hinman, and Gary Gensler are the epitome of all that is wrong with the financial markets that are controlled in the United States. Clayton's video should even make Hester Pierce feel bad for him once more. Hester Pierce has accomplished nothing. She is no more superior than any of these people. I feel that all of these well-known figures in the Seek are only front players. Someone is really pulling the strings behind them. And I've discussed it even though there's been a litigation involving XRP and Ripple for more than 2.5 years. Ours. It was one of the most contrived occurrences in cryptocurrency. Really, consider this. Everyone was eager for the legal dispute to conclude. Everyone anticipated that once the litigation was over, XRP would soar, but instead, it only saw a slight increase that didn't it even was break separated one from the rest of the market was sold for 2.5 off. years. It was repressed. That is a fact. Beyond that, though the entire period we had posts and headline articles about X and, you know, it was all manipulation. Moreover, at precisely the same moment, Hester Pierce, a former SEC commissioner, was among those who voiced concerns about Gary Gensler's performance expressing her embarrassment for the agency and advocating for improved SEC operations. It also makes no sense to me. The SEC was expected to carry out specific tasks if they were expected to perform their duties more effectively. Why were they not completed? Behind them, someone was making decisions. Recall that the G20 has given the SBI instructions to provide worldwide crypto regulatory frameworks by the end of 2025. Gary Gensler is also a board member of the FSB. All of this is one enormous drama, as I mentioned earlier. That's also the main reason I believe that many of these individuals, including Gary Jeansler and Jay Clay in the minute, belong to the same group. Regarding crypto, they all have the same goals in mind. However, beyond this as well, we can also see this over here. Officially, the U.S. has lost the plot. Us officials are punishing and hurting us investors more than scammers are. And it speaks... volumes because I'm not downplaying the amount of fraud in this ecosystem. Once more, there was a great deal of fraud in the industry. Let's face it, how many cryptocurrencies are there currently? Really, it's absurd. 99% of them add nothing to this place or anywhere else. Thus, there's a great deal of deception. Regulators, however, are the main issue in this field. Consider it. As I mentioned before, Optics was an inside plant. They planted the seed, allowed it to grow and grow and expand, and then all of a sudden, at the right moment, 
They pulled the plug. How could Fix just sail by Congress the second? Congress is pursuing him for this all the time. Furthermore, no, don't take Gary Gensler co. They badger them nonstop asking how he let fuck. Texts go and why there are no records of it. Why? Yes, it is correct. After all, this was all caused by the implosion of Plan Fix. Elizabeth Warren and other pro-bankers were suggesting that tougher laws on cryptocurrency were necessary right after FTX collapsed, but this was all part of a larger scheme. However, as we can see, Satoshi's wallet is no longer accessible in the U.S. due to us officials pushing it overseas. It is still functional. However, there is no rug pool, just touch integration, and you cannot download the app if you misplace your phone. Regulations dictate that us citizens must remove their money from Satoshi's wallet, W-O-E-O-S, and in essence, this was the most basic Bitcoin Lightning wallet in existence, and people of the U.S. can no longer access it. Once more, the concept is that you cannot re-download anything from it your is phone a if you misplace issue. it, or perhaps more you generally, a new one. you should only store as much money on custodial spending applications as would fit in a physical wallet. That is, as little as would not bankrupt you, if it was lost. In the same way that you can get mugged, you can also get hacked or rug pulled. Larger savings ought to be kept in more stable accounts. Monopolies seldom ever fall apart, and the U.S. controls the global reserve currency. They won't want to give up money, efficiency, or innovation that could threaten their monopoly. Because of this, a large portion of this innovation is probably going to happen offshore. The absurd thing about it all, though, is that trust is the only thing there. Is. Is kept in cold storage. Since consider it, don't you think? Therefore, whatever. You therefore brought your cold storage equipment on your flight across the globe the next day. You still have the currency in your cold storage, Atlanta, even though it's in another country. Both inside and outside of the U.S., you are free to use it whatever you like. Nothing can stop your cold storage appliances. Are digital wallets stored on mobile devices? Why would you use these applications to store millions of dollars? I take it that with centralized exchanges, it is the same. Centralized exchanges are something I always assume will be compromised. Getting shut down tomorrow? Next week, I almost next use them month, for everything. Or even longer. As an illustration, let's say I go to the grocery shop. <sighs> Open, buy my groceries. Are those groceries in my possession in their refrigerators? No, I'm bringing them home and storing them in my fridge. I view the centralized exchanges in exactly the same manner. Again, this is the safest method. So I go in, buy my coins, and transmit them from that exchange to my ledger, good wallet, or whatever cold storage device I have. You can even diversify your cold storage devices by having two or five separate wallets if you really want to take things a step further. Just be sure, Saddam, that you are aware of the Logan and passphrase. However, once more, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is not the moment to play about. This is not the time to use these wallets or these apps, which could once more be prohibited or shut down in the United States. States. This is a serious issue, and once more, regulators are to blame. They wish to ensure that you do not get exceedingly wealthy because, surprise, you know who the regulator answers to the bankers. The large banks control them all. We know that the incumbents and bankers are the ones holding the strings, so consider it this way. 24, 48 hours after Binance was hit, what was the time? What have we seen, you ask? Jeep Morgan has stated that all of these incumbents, including BlackRock, will benefit greatly from this. Indeed, it's quite beneficial to them. Because, oil alert, Nance is the biggest cryptocurrency exchange. They are, I believe, the third or fourth biggest Bitcoin holders. The incumbents stand to gain greatly from this. And for that reason, I do think that Nance was the target. I do oh, think that will be Nance spared by incumbents. Whatever they have, they'll utilize it. And what do you know? You can get a lot with money, especially in the U.S. Regulators are obtainable. Anyone is able to be purchased. Everyone has a cost, after all. And this is also the most important point I mentioned regarding cryptocurrency. They will pursue cryptocurrency in these controlled exchanges nonstop. Since, hey, what? 
Bankers are starting to offer custody services. It's a serious red flag because, guess what? They're targeting the wrong person if they're starting custody services. Yes, it is correct. When the incumbents look at the decentralized companies in this market that generate enormous profits from the fees charged to users of the platforms, all they perceive is a payday. <laughs> you see, the bank in uh, the industry is evolving. The financial landscape is evolving. The digital era is taking over everything, and they're eager to participate in that. Are you genuinely of the opinion that they will remain in the background and allow this enormous breakthrough to occur? No. Additionally, they employed regulators as speed bumps to slow down this industry while they gathered more. Having said that, I sincerely hope you all liked this video. It would be really appreciated if you could also subscribe to notifications for those of us who do not wish to purchase cold storage devices. You guys still have six days to take advantage of this 40s off offer, decent wallet. There are only Black six Friday. days left to take advantage of the lowest and best offer of the year which is to acquire a cold store. Age wallet for $50 off or a two pack for $128 off. If you haven't gotten one yet, you'll have to wait a whole year to take advantage of this deal again. This is one of the greatest offers available right now on cold storage equipment. I've been carrying a respectable wallet for far longer, more than a year. I have not experienced any problems at all. Once more, I do have a ledger and a respectable wallet. I am diversified. To kind of diversify my cold sores, I plan to extend into another wallet in the upcoming year. But so far, Excellent Wallet has been significantly superior to Ledger. The only thing I wish they had is a genuine computer application similar to Ledger, but that's just not possible. Now is the ideal moment to check out one of these devices, which are among the best cold age store. options available. Thus, if any of you would like to go grab one, Please leave a comment below with the link.